Hello everyone and welcome to episode 15 of Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. In the last episode we fought through the hidden, the Black Volker base and I believe we have found the prototype so let's pick it up. Ready. This is what we came here for, this is what we wanted. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let's go, uh, yep, swoop accelerator, that is what we wanted, items received. Good news. That wasn't that difficult. Let's go back up here. Evidently, Bredrick does not have... I picked up some kind of key. I guess I can't use it here. Okay. Evidently, Bredrick does not have Bastila here, so we're going to have to win her in the swoop bike race. I want to go, we need to go back and we need to talk to Gad and Thek, but first I want to visit the cantina. In the cantina, I want to do at least one more fight. Not that way, this way. Did I explore everything out here? I believe I did. Where's that music coming from? And I use the term music as lightly as humanly possible. Where does that elevator go? Oh, that goes back to the Sewers. Well, we don't want to go to the sewers. There's a way to get out of this base and get into... There's a way to get out of this base and into the lower city. That's what we want to do. Because we want to go to the lower city to the upper city, otherwise we'll have to much longer walk to get from the sewers to the under city, to the lower city, to the upper city, to the cantina, and to the ring. Lower city cuts down on part of that, at least. And we will be revisiting the lower city when we get when we take the prototype back to Gad and Thek. Obviously, we're here outside the uh, Black Volker base. I believe this is up to the upper city north. Yes, this is where we want to go. I should be strong enough to at least do a couple more of the fights. You can fight all five um, enemy, you can fight all five enemies in the cantina and then if you want to go ahead and fight uh, Bindak Starkiller you can do that as well. Starkiller was actually originally going to be there's the mil there's the Sith military base. I don't know. I don't remember if we go into the Sith military base or not. Star Killer was originally going to be Luke Skywalker's last name. I kind of like the name Skywalker better. But obviously, Star Killer wound up being the name of the main protagonist of the Star Wars Force Unleashed one and two. I really need to get those games because I played the hell out of the demo when it was a lot of fun. Did you guys play Star Wars Unleashed? If you did, let me know what you think. I heard Star Wars Unleashed... I heard a lot of good things say. Despite... Uh, Star Wars Unre Unleashed... Uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed 1 got mixed reviews from a whole lot of different outlets. Some people said it was great. Some people said it wasn't so great. What did you guys think of it? Let me know. North Apartments. Star Wars Unleashed 2 was 
largely negative across the board, and I have heard that that, out, that game isn't nearly as good as one, and I've heard that it's kind of a waste of your time to play, like, it's short, the story isn't as good, the characters aren't as good as they were in the first game, it feels like it should be a DLC expansion instead of a full game and stuff like that. Like, I've heard all kinds of stuff about it. Um, that seems to be the conclusion that, um... The Completionist arrived at. His last episode was actually on The Force Unleashed 2. And he rather enjoyed The Force Unleashed 1. He played through that in the first year of his show. And he said it was a good game. He really seemed to like it quite a bit. What did you guys think of The Force Unleashed? I played the demo and I beat it probably 9 or 10 times. It was so much fun to play. Like... The Force powers were so ridiculous and over the top, it just made it a ton of fun. Cantina Entrance. Obviously, doing that, you don't really get into the story, but I've heard the story's pretty good for the Force Unleashed 1. If you've played it, let me know down below what you think of it. Of course... It originally bridged the gap between episodes 4, 5, and 6 and episodes 1, 2, and 3. I don't think it does that anymore because I believe they made everything non-canon. Ugh, I forgot to save. I believe they made everything non-canon that isn't, like, in an official movie or something, so, like, all the Extended Universe stuff, like this, is non-canon now, I believe. I am ready for a duel. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. Over in this corner, a woman with steel on her bones and ice water in her veins. She's cold and quick as death itself. You know her. You love her. Ice. And in the other corner, a rising star taking that first step into the big leagues. I give you the mysterious stranger. Let's start off with a uh, grenade of some kind. Sonic Grenade, Poison Grenade, Plasma, uh, Frag. Now let's go get her. I don't remember how hard she is. Okay, so she fell down pretty quickly. is knocked out cold. Looks like we have a rising star in the mysterious stranger, folks. But how high can this star soar? You'll just have to watch and see. I think it was a little bit over level for that fight. Anyway, yeah, they made everything in it. non can Let's talk to Ice and see what she has to say now. I've never been one to shy away from the cold, hard truth, so I'll just come right out and say it. 
I can't compete with the likes of you, stranger. I know when I'm overmatched. You're good. Very good. But you're wrong if you think that means I'm suddenly going to warm up to you. Truth is, I really don't have anything more to say. So you might as well move on. Okay. Yeah, they made everything non-canon and that kind of sucks because, like, the writing in this game is so much better than the writing in the other games, than in the prequels. Let's do one more. We got 300 credits for that fight. Let's uh, talk to him again. I'm ready for a duel. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. He's a legend in the sport. A 20-year veteran who still knows how to show the young kids a trick or two. Let's have a big hand for... Marl! But there's always some young gun coming up to knock the veterans off. And we've got one of the best right here. I give you the Mysterious Stranger. Okay, let's start him off with a grenade again. Ah, he... Ran too far. Let's see if uh, we're going to need any med pack for this. We almost got him. Uh, we got him. That wasn't that difficult. It's over. The fight is over. The mysterious stranger has won. Marl is down and questions about. Is this the end for the long-time bet? Is it time for Mal to hang up his spurs? And what of the mysterious stranger? Twitch is waiting in the wings. Do you dare take a shot at the champion himself? Will the Wild Eye Wonder finally be unseated? Well, Marl did say I had talent for this, so and he was right. Let's heal real quick. See, we didn't even have to use any uh, med packs to get through that fight. We still got a couple of, a few advanced med packs. You're good, stranger. Maybe even as good as Bendak in his prime. There's no shame in losing to you. But when you beat me, you made me realize something, kid. First, it was just Twitch I couldn't handle. Now it's you and Twitch. Pretty soon, there'll be another young hotshot clawing past me in the rankings. This game's been good to me, but my time is done. I need to get away from the duel rings for a while. Think things over. Goodbye, stranger. I wish you all the best. Okay, so he's retiring from the duel rings. Let's save again. And let's try Twitch. Let's... This is the last one. Let's see if we can do it.
We got 400 credits for that. We're getting a lot of credits now. Let's. How much do we have? Almost 2,000. <laughs> I am ready to do. Let's do it. I think Twitch you and gentlemen, draw your eyes to the center ring. We have a very special presentation in store for you. Hold on to your seats and stay back from the edges of the ring. He's wild, he's unpredictable, he's borderline psychotic. And he's the best damn duelist in the game today. Give it up for Twitch. But Twitch's opponent plans to take the champion down. Night after night, battle after battle, we've watched this young phenom rise through the ranks. In this corner, the challenger for the title of Taris Dueling Champion, the Mysterious Stranger. Okay, let's start off with a frag grenade. Another frag grenade. And now let's go get him. That yeah, got him down half health. He only uses blasters. And his bl or I stand corrected. His blasters can be pretty powerful. But it looks like we're gonna get him. Almost got him. Almost got got him. Yes, we are the champions. Which's reign of terror is over, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new champion, the mysterious stranger. At this point, I can talk to them and I can fight Bendak Star Killer if I so desire. Let's talk to Switch. <laughs> Okay. Let's talk to Azure. Okay, as you can guess, at this point, we can fight Bendak Star Killer if we so choose. You know what? I'm just going to return to base and that'll heal me. But you will get dark side points if you fight Bendak Star Killer. I don't want to get the dark side points. I'm playing as a good guy. I've been watching you on the dueling ring. Not bad for an amateur. 
tempted to come out of retirement and show you what it's like to do battle against a real champion, but I only fight in death matches. And not too many people are willing to step into the ring knowing they won't ever come out. How about you, stranger? You think you got what it takes? <laughs> Off with you then. I'm done with this conversation anyway. Like I said, you get dark side points. You can do it if you want. You get good experience. And you actually, I believe he's easier than Twitch. Honestly, if I remember. But you can fight him if you want. I'm going to choose not to. Because I'm playing as a good guy. Um, I'm. Let's go down back to the lower city and we'll talk. To Gadden Thek. after we return to the apartment for healing purposes. And then I want to talk to, um, I want to get more med packs from, what's his name? I forget his name. The Good Doctor. You know what I'm talking about. And I think I, I, think I want to bring Zalbar with me. Get Zalbar some experience on this kind of thing. Everybody should be healed now. Let's visit the workbench, see if we got anything we can upgrade. Nothing we can do now, okay. Salbar, Karth. Done. Let's go. Let's go talk to Gadden Thick. Those fights were actually a bit easier than I remember them being. Maybe I fought them earlier in the game in my previous one, and I've leveled up several times since I uh, was last in that cantina. What? So that probably has a lot to do with it. I like to think we're doing a lot of good for this planet as a whole. During our time here. Now I asked if you guys wanted me to be a bad guy and I didn't get a response on that so I just decided I'd go the good guy route. Although one of the characters that I want to get before I or on We'll have most of our party by the time we leave this planet, but not all of them. There's like, I think, three more characters we can pick up after this planet. And they're on three separate planets. One of them is on the second planet that you go to. And you don't really get a choice in a matter of what the second planet you go to is. It's just... You go directly from this one to that one. And it's after you beat that planet that the world finally opens up. And it gets a little more non-linear, as it, like, kind of like how you spent so long in Mass Effect, how you spent so long in, um, you spent like 10 hours just wandering around and doing quests in, uh, the Citadel in Mass Effect 1. And then you, after that, it kind of opens up and you get a choice of planets you want to go to. It's a lot like that. I mean, it's th this game and that game are structured very similarly. Which I guess is, isn't that surprising, given that they're from the same company. This is significantly earlier than that game. I mean, obviously a full generation of consoles. They're both great, though. I would highly recommend both this and Mass Effect. Although, I will say, Mass Effect has better combat than this does. The combat in this game, while cool to watch with the lightsaber duels and everything, isn't all that exciting to actually sit down and play. It's the running around, running around talking to people, and exploring that is an absolute blast in this game, and the story and characters that keep it really interesting and fun. 
So if you're not ru into running around and exploring everything, then you're probably not going to get a lot out of this game. Just saying. It, if that's not your thing, if you're all about 100% gameplay and action, RPGs in general probably aren't for you. But they are for me. I love this game a lot. Obviously, I love running around in action, too, because I played two first-person shooters on this channel before, and they won't be my last. Greetings, Gaddon. You've returned. Do you have the prototype swoop engine accelerator with you? I have the accelerator here. I was beginning to wonder if you would make it. The race is tomorrow, and my mechanics need time to install the prototype into the swoop engine of our bike. Okay, I live up to my end of the bargain. Now you have to come through. Not so fast, Captain Tech. I want a reward for recovering this. Don't worry. I'm a man of my word. I promised you could ride in the swoop race under the Hidden Beck banner, and I'm still going to let you do that. And I'm even going to go one better. I'm going to let you ride the swoop bike with the prototype accelerator installed on it. Without it, you won't stand a chance. Gaddon, you can't be serious. We need one of our best riders on that bike. We can't let some rookie take the prototype engine into the race. Don't worry, Gaddon, I'll win the race. Why are you doing this, Gaddon? Zedra's... Zedra's right. One of you, your own riders, would get the swoop bike. I have to be honest with you. There's a reason I'm letting you take the prototype engine. The accelerator isn't stable. There's a good chance it could explode during the race. I can't ask one of my own riders to take the risk. They'll be running unmodified swoops in the race. You'll be the only one using the prototype. If you can complete the track before the accelerator overheats, then you'll win for the Bex. If you die, then one of my other riders could still come through for me. Sounds like you've got all your bases covered. Okay, I'm ready for the race. You don't get to be leader of a swoop gang if you don't know how to work all the angles. You can stay here tonight. The mechanics need time to install the accelerator on the engine, so you won't be able to practice your riding. But I've got good instincts. And you have the look of a racer about you. Just try to relax, and in the morning we'll take you to the swoop track. You spend a restless night at the Beck base. In the morning, one of the Becks takes you to swoop track, swoop racing pits where only racers and mechanics are allowed to go. Sure, tell me how it is done. She offers to she enjoyed the trout and rosy goat and she behind Gorufia. When now for the Tufta, Tolu, to the Tufta, and the book Elfa, or if he don't Elfa, but he no can't Elfa. Okay, let's start the race. Oh, 
I won't let you down. I don't know about you guys, but I feel reassured by that. I'm sure nothing is going to go wrong here. Okay, um... I'm going to save this for the next episode, though. Sorry to leave you guys hanging, but I have no choice. I'm at 31 minutes already. So, thank you, everybody, for watching this episode of Let's Play Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Please like, comment, and subscribe down below. It would be greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye!